Good morning. We are the Community Advisory Board known as CAB. We are a board established by the Community Corrections Partnership, CCC. First of all, we'll start off with introductions. Ariana, could you kindly call the roll in order to establish forms? I will ask board members to identify your region in Contra Costa County. Nicole Green. Um, hi, I'm Nicole Green, East County uh, Vice Chair and Chair of Programs and Services. Ozzy Carter. Ozzy Carter, um, East County, CAB Chair. Brenda Lee. <laughs> Brenda Lee, West County. Raina Moore. Raina Moore, East County. Latanya Thompson. Latanya Thompson, West County. Reverend Julius Van Hook. Julius Van Hook, West County. Renee Hurley. Renee Hurley, West County. Jeffrey Robinson. Jeffrey Robinson, representing Central County. Eight members present, quorum is established. Mariana, we will now have introductions from ORJ staff and then our county agencies present. Hi all, Patrice Skillery here from the Office of Ranger Justice. Hello, good morning, Gariana Youngblood with the Office of Reentry and Justice. We'll move on to the I'm Jamie Jeanette with Health, Housing, and Homeless Services under Contra Costa Health. Cynthia Zavala Center for but I was just Jill Ray with the Office of Supervisor Anthony Rivera, Center Force. Annette Corvo, Center Force. Tiffany and I, the Chief Success Center. Gianna Evans, Contra Costa County Office of Education. Alejandra Sanchez with Supervisor Ken Carlson's office. I'm Malik Asherobi would beat the this? streets. What do I do once uh -oh. I have this? Good question. So, Susan Woodhouse, Public uh -oh. Defender's Office. I have a lot. Yes. We have another ORJ staff that would like to introduce themselves at this particular time. Hi, I'm Michelle Elizondo, Program Coordinator with the Office of Reentry and Justice. Good to be here. And uh, Malik Ashrobi with Beat the Streets, Inc. Is that the printer? I don't even know what that noise is. Oops, sorry. Okay, hopefully we have heard from all of our present attendees for this meeting. And prior to moving to announcements, let's set the table for the quorum in this venue. Those participating in person should make focus comments when called upon. Those participating on Zoom should indicate they wish to speak by using the raise your hand feature on the Zoom map. Those calling in, I don't think we have anyone calling in, but in the event that we do, they should indicate they wish to speak by using the star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute on their phone. Now let's take a moment to review our purpose. That purpose is to revise CCP by assessing the implementation of the county reentry strategic plan. Some, but not all of our responsibilities are reviewing data on realignment outcomes, advising CCP on engagement strategies, offering recommendations for ongoing realignment planning, and advising county agencies regarding programs for implementations in the county. Also, last but not least, we encourage outcomes that are consistent with the county's reentry strategic plan. We're now open for announcements. We'll begin with CAB members.
Remember announcement from CAB members? If I'm not mistaken, I believe that there are some events that are coming up on this weekend from the Men and Women of Purpose. There's a graduation that's taking place on Saturday, um, starting at 3 o'clock. Right at 2. 2, at 2 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Any other additional information you'd like to uh, add to that, Amy? No, we're looking forward to seeing everyone there. Okay. So could you let them know where it's going to be held? Um, I don't have the address on me, but it's going to be in Richmond and Hilltop Green, our community center. Very good. Thank you. Any other announcements? Um, the, uh, the county is going to have some listening sessions that uh, Alcohol and Drug Advisory Board for uh, recommendation for distribution of funds for the opioid settlement. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the Reentry Success Center is excited to announce we are hosting a community activity night on Tuesday, May 21st for all of our members. Uh, we're going to be playing games, karaoke, have dinner, there uh, raffles, and really just build community and uh, provide a safe space. So we're really looking forward to having another successful event. Uh, we just had one for reentry month on Tuesday, April 30th, and it was a lot of fun. We were trying to shut it down at 7.30 so we could get cleaned up, and our members just continued on with karaoke until 8 o'clock um, while we got the center back in order. Um, so we're really excited to announce we're having another one um, this month since everyone had such a great time last month. We're also um, really excited that we were coming up on our Clean Slate Day in partnership with the Public Defender's Office on Friday, May 17th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at our office. In addition to Clean Slate Day, we are also leading up to our annual, it will be our third Welcome Home Reentry Community Resource and Employment Fair blog party on Friday, July 26th from 10 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Thank you. And thank you, Tiffany. Are there any other announcements? Yes, I have uh, two. There's a screening on um, a uh, film called Judging Juries uh, that will be taking place on May 16th. Um, how do you want to do that? Oh, it's going to be at the Rise Center, excuse me, in Richmond um, from 5 to 30, I believe. Um, and following the, the film screen, it's a brief film screening. Start, it looks at um, the issue around lack of diversity in jury selections and jury pools across the country. Um, and following that screening uh, will be a panel discussion um, that will include some of our own uh, local uh, justice agency leaders and experts in the field. Um, the Becton will be there, public defender um, Ellen McDonald will be speaking. We have a former judge from Alameda County, and I'm missing one other person. But anyway, be a really great, uh, it's going to be a really great event. Um, it's co sponsored by RISE uh, Youth Center and also our new county office of racial equity and social justice. There will be a phone screening taking place also in East County. Um, on May 30th, around the same time. I think the location has been solidified. I just do not recall just yet. However, as we get closer to the date, we'll make sure you, we'll make sure you guys get um, uh, uh, flyers on that. So again, the first one coming up, May 16th, Rye Center in Richmond, 5 p.m., be there, be square. The other um, announcement is that um, there is a work group of various practitioners um, in the space of guaranteed income that will be hosting a public webinar and is inviting members of the public to attend to learn about uh, guaranteed income, its principles, best practices, and local implementation um, in various pilots that are currently underway here in Contra Costa, as well as um, other um, pilots in other parts of the country. This will take place on May 20th, Monday, May 20th, from 3 to 4 p.m. I do have flyers printed out now. I'll grab one in a minute and have them at the table so that you guys can access those. Um, but anyway, virtual uh, opportunity to learn more about guaranteed income. That's it for me. Thank you. Any other 
any of the announcements? Any announcements from our public? Hearing none. We'll move on to our next item, which will be an inspirational quote from Herman Van Hook. Thank you. Today's quote is from Ellen Fitzgerald. Just don't give up trying to do what you really want to do. Where there is love and inspiration, I don't think you can go wrong. Again, that's from Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> Thank you for that, Reverend Van Hook. Now moving to the rest of our agenda. First item would be open for public comment. Is there public comment on any item under the jurisdiction of the Community Advisory Board and not on this agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to item number three, which is the approval of record of action from the Thursday, April 11, 2024 CAB General Meeting which is attachment one, please see pages five and eight. This is a voting item. I will be looking for a motion and a second. Nicole, I motion to approve of the record of action from our Thursday, April 11th, have uh, general meeting. Regina Morris, I second the motion. Your Honor, we have a motion made by Nicole Green and second by Rita Moore. Would you yes. please call for a vote? Yes. Would you like me to take a roll call vote or do all in favor? All in favor would be sufficient. All right. All in favor of approving of record of action from the Thursday, April 11th CAB general meeting, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Any accused? Motion carries. Oh, sorry. Any abstentions? <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you, Gary Hanna. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moving on to the next item on our agenda, it gives me great pleasure to, to uh, actually have this conversation prior to the introduction. Um, it has been my vested duty as the CAP chair uh, to really look into our communities, East County, specifically in Central County, to uh, find more of our community-based organizations and really looking for the uh, to spotlight those organizations within our communities that are doing what I consider boots on the ground, the hand in hand combat with the populations that we are serving. Um, Beat the Streets came across my radar a couple of years ago, and this year um, I had an opportunity to actually sit down with the vice chair and have a conversation with the organization. And it really pleases me to have them here. But the caveat to this is. Uh, part of our outreach committee and CAD and in general as a whole, we're looking for visibility and how we can educate our community, specifically in East County and Central County, about what CAD is about and what CAD is doing. And I look to a future collaboration with this organization because I think it's centrally located in East County. Their, uh, their space is just really a space that's very inviting, it has the foot traffic, but it also has the populations coming in and out of their organization that could be really a, a, a focal point for CAB and, and our collaboration with them. So in moving forward, this is an organization that I really highly uh, recommend to be a collaborative partner in our future interest in, in recruitment. 
without further ado, I would like to present the history, and I don't want to assassinate Malik's last name, so I'm going to give Malik the honor and the privilege to begin his presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for that introduction. That was that was great. And uh, I also want to say I really enjoyed that quote that was given. Um, so my name is Malik Asherobi. I'm the program director of Beat the Streets, Inc. And I'll be giving a presentation today. Um, so we're a smart tech community and resource center, and we serve at-risk youth and young adults and young adults. Um, our mission for Beat the Street is to ensure every youth and young adults in Antioch and the surrounding counties to have resources that they need to be successful in educational, vocational, and life skills services. And our vision is to empower the, the youth and the young adults in low-income communities with our three services, educational, vocational, and life skills services. So it all started with our founder and president, Ms. Tracy Tate. Um, she moved in her house in Pittsburgh and she saw a lot of people on the streets and that they needed some help. So she would invite them into their home. She would cook for them. Um, they would play basketball outside her house. Um, she would help them with homework, things like that. Um, throw graduation ceremonies for them. So she was like really a mentor um, to help them get to that next stage in their life. And um, I think at some point she started getting harassed by the police. So she needed to make it an actual business. So that's when she decided to create the nonprofit Beat the Streets. So uh, the main objective is for our youth to help them from dropping out of school, um, stop them from getting in trouble with the law. And also Beat the Streets is like a safe haven. So it's a place where you can come to relax. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about any beef. And you also can get the help that you need need help with your homework, we can do that. You need help writing a resume, you're looking for a job, we can do that. You just need somebody to talk to, uh, we can do that. So it's a safe haven, but it's also a place where we provide services that you need. You know, as I mentioned before, um, we are a resource center, but we do provide services. So we have educational, vocational, and life skill services. And as long as you're within our age group of 11 through 29, our services are free. So some of the educational services that we provide, we have uh, a learning style assessment. Um, this assessment basically tells you the best way that you learn, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, we offer tutoring and homework help. Um, we offer a GED scholarship for those who um, are looking to get their GED, and they need a little assistance. They need somebody to push them. They need some case management. They need somebody to help them through the process. We do that. And as well, we provide them with $250 once they receive their um, scholarship, 250, it's not a lot, but it's something. So it's a little bit of motivation there. Um, college support, a lot, of, a lot of these young youth have trouble. They want to go to college, but they think it's too big of a step for them, or they don't know how to get the FAFSA. They don't know that they can go for free, or they don't know how to fill out the applications or enrollment or things like that. So we assist with them with that. And then we also provide case management for high schoolers, making sure the grades are okay and they have all the assistance that they need. So vocational, we have a career assessment. This assessment basically tells you what career and what um, skills you might be good at. Um, we do job referrals, so we get resources from different organizations and we refer them out to clients that come here. Um, we do entrepreneurial workshops every now and then. Um, employment preparation, interview practice, um, resume assessments, uh, employment opportunities, we help with that. And then again, we do mentoring to help you get ready for these jobs. And then some of the life skills we provide, <clears throat> um, financial literacy, teaching you about your credit, taxes, um, budgeting, um, just how to save your money in addition to, you know, you getting your first paycheck. Don't just go and spurge it all. We want to teach you how to be financially um, sufficient. Um, we also provide vision boards. Uh, so we call it Vision Master Plan Project. It's just a good way for the youth to envision the way they want their life to look. You know, just give them a plan, give them some goals, something that they can visually see in front of them to take them to the next step while they're on this journey. 
Um, we also offer health and wellness workshops. That looks like um, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Um, this it can be tutoring. Um, it can be counseling, therapy. So we offer those as well. And then we do mentoring and individual and family sessions because sometimes it's not always just the individual. Sometimes the dynamic of the family is very important. So in addition to seeing the individual, we also like to bring in the family as well. And we hold those sessions. Um, you can skip this one. So this is what uh, the, this is our career assessment. And it just tells you after you take it, it's, it's like a yes or no type of assessment. It's like, it'll show a picture of maybe somebody, are you future oriented? Yes or no? And you answer the question and then it gives you results at the end. And it gives you a list of careers that you might be good at. And it tells you what type of person you are like skill wise. So it says action taker. Are you an inventor? Are you a mentor? And so forth. So um, I really enjoyed the assessments when I first got here. I took the assessment just just to check it out. And um, I, I just really enjoy learning about myself and what kind of person I am and going more in depth. So I think the young individuals enjoy it as well. And then we have our learning style assessment. This is tells you the best way that you learn and what environment that you learn best in. So some people learn better um, outside. Some people learn better inside. Some people learn better um, auditory or um, you know, being hands-on, kinesthetic. So this is a good assessment for that. And then the last one is our big five personality. It tells you your, your top five personality traits after you take it. So um, it goes really in depth, but this is just like a screenshot of one picture. So you might be in pressure. Hello, Malik, are you there? If you're speaking, you're frozen on our end. Hello? Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. My internet uh lagged out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Technical issues 2024. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we can go to the next slide. And you can skip that slide. So this is just some of the um individual services that we offer. So if we look at um, just some of the numbers, a lot of the things that we do when people come in, we offer a lot of mentorship, we offer a lot of health and wellness sessions, and we offer a lot of job referrals. Those are probably our top three. Um, but in these mentorships, a lot of things are going on. So uh, we might help somebody with expungement, we might help them get their driver's license, um, they might, we might be preparing them for a job. So all of this is um, tied into mentorship and health and wellness, which is why those numbers are so high. And um, and then we have our justice impact the individuals. This is all numbers from last year. So I would say about 35 individuals who were justice impacted came through our center. Um, we also provide workshops. So some of the workshops we have game night, um, vision board projects. We did a parenting class a couple of times, um, anger management classes, um, health and wellness entrepreneur workshops. And when we do our workshops, they're not always in-house. Sometimes we like to collaborate with other organizations. So we'll go to maybe like Antioch High or one of the continuation schools, or we like to collaborate when we do our workshops. So they're not always just um, here in-house. So yeah, some of our collaborations, um, the Juvenile Justice Probation Department, um, Antioch High, Live Oak Continuation, um, United Corps Alliance, they help us with expungement, um, bridge builders. So we have a couple of different um, collaborations going now. And here's one of our young individuals who came by and had a success story. His name is Ephraim. 
Um, he was referred from the juvenile probation officer. He received tutoring. Uh, we helped him get his high school diploma. He did a couple of entrepreneurial workshops. He completed all his community hours with us. So if I didn't mention that, we offered community service hours. Um, he got anger management support, and then we gave him a job referral, and he was able to take that jump to the next level in his life. Um, you can skip this one. You can skip. Oh, uh, well, I'll show you our location. That's probably actually good. Um, so we're actually located inside the Antioch Summersville Town Center, which is the Antioch Mall. I don't know if you guys have been here, but we're right in the back. And there's a gym in the back called Malu Fitness, and we're right across from the gym. If anybody ever wants to come check us out, come say hi. I'll be here. I'm here from 11 to 6. So, yeah. And then some of the short-term and long-term goals, um, we want a partnership with some agencies that provide direct employment. That's probably one of the big ones, short and long-term, just so that when individuals come in here, we have somebody that they can connect to and that they can have employment because I feel like that's one of the biggest issues that I see with young individuals coming in and can I find a job? I need work. And it's not just young people. Um, somebody just stopped by yesterday and they were like 35. And so we don't turn anybody away, even if they're not in our age group from 11 to 29. Um, I feel like everybody should be offered the help that they need. And that's it. Thank, Thank you everybody you. so much for listening and um, giving me this platform to share with you guys. Thank you, Malik. We appreciate you taking the time and, and, make, and doing your presentation, but we also would like to thank you for the work that your organization is doing within our community. And at this time, I would like to open up to the board if there are any questions. And um, please don't be shy of asking questions. I think it's really important as board members that we do um, have some types of input and kind of encourage our, our audience and our community in the acknowledgement. Uh, so I'm going to go around the room, if that's okay with everyone. We'll start with this. Um, you want to uh, offer some input or some questions? Like I said, I have a little input. Um, last year sometime, we attended um, one of their fairs they had. And I met the young man, and he had a lot of different resources there. It was a nice resource fair. So I think they're doing an excellent job. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the work that you do. I just had a quick question. I saw one of the uh, services that you provided was 11 people were helped with housing resources. What does that look like for Beat Street? Beat the Street. Um, so for us, that just um, so we provide resource to other housing um, organizations. So we don't provide housing ourselves, but um, when we, um, I don't even know the name of some of the complexes, but it's like a couple in Antioch and some in Pittsburgh, but I have the resources here. And when people come in and they need housing, I try to firm that way. Um, I know I have a big list of housing for people with disability. So whatever resources I have on hand, I share them with those who are in need of housing. So, and we're also always looking for new resources. Thank you. I don't have any questions, just feedback. Very familiar with Beaker Street. I just think you all are doing an amazing job of our conversation that we had. And just like everybody else, keep up the good work. So I'm just excited about the work that you're doing and continue to do. I have any questions. Thank you. Uh, I, I really wish I could um, see everybody. <laughs> oh, small. And it's hard to tell who's talking from the Zoom. So, like, I've heard people met, but I just can't see your face, but I just want to thank you anyway. I do have a question, um, Malik, and this is Osmi. In regards to the platform um, that you're using for your assessment, is that something that you've created, or is that a licensed platform? And um, Yes, that's... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Is that a, a licensed platform that you're using? 
Yes, it is license platform. And we have to get um we have to receive a certain amount of assessments each year to pay for it. So we we need about I think a hundred assessments a year. So per year, um, I'm sorry, I might have missed that. What I did capture was that you actually, um, the last year, is it true that there were 35 individuals who were reentry? Re um, yeah. Individuals who were associated with the reentry process that you assisted? Yes. Is that information captured in your platform? Yes. Yeah. We use um, Salesforce for all of our data, and we have all of that data on our Salesforce platform. Thank you very much for that. And thank you so much for taking the time to present today. Excuse me, this is Bridget Lee from West County. I'm very impressed and I was just wondering, do you collaborate with uh, any groups in West County? Because this, this seems like a very good program and it seems like it should be like countywide. Are you guys allowed to do that sort of thing? Um, yeah, we are allowed to do that. We usually just serve in Antioch and Pittsburgh, but um, we do want to collaborate with anybody. Uh, mostly we do East County um, because we run on a lot of volunteers. So to go to West County would take, um, I think, a lot of footwork from us. And um, But it's not something that I'm opposed to, so I would definitely be willing to hear hear you out. Okay. <laughs> Is he volunteering me? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hi, I'm Trina Morris. So my question was, um, like, how do people get connected? Like, can I use come in off the street and get your services? Or you had mentioned some referrals from probation as well. Like, where um, how do you guys get clients? Like, referrals. Um. Yeah, so we we uh receive a lot of individu individuals from the juvenile probation center, and then um they send us a referral form that way, and then you also can come off the street. So we do get foot traffic. You can just walk in, you do a take form, and then we start providing services. Um, a lot of people come in from word of mouth, you know, just telling people like, "Hey, my friend went here," and then they come, or sometimes they come with friends, and it just spreads that way. The work you're doing. Okay, so they both asked my question. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of um, so we know that you work with people that's in the juvenile system, um, and you take people yes, off the, the streets. What would be the best um process, or could we create a process for people who are currently incarcerated who have kids that fall within this group, um, mm -hmm. and especially for those that are in West County as a resource. I, I think the best way would just be to go on our website and fill out the intake form. And once you fill out the intake form, someone will reach out to them and then we can start helping them as, as soon as possible. If that answered your question. Yes, I have a second question too. Um, so because children who, I mean, most children have experienced some type of trauma um, and having their parents incarcerated or being incarcerated would be trauma. I know that you said that you guys deal with health and wellness. Do you deal with trauma? Do you deal with children who may um, have also been introduced to substance and now have a substance abuse um, issue? Um, so our our licensed therapist, his uh, his his license is in counseling and also in family and marriage and therapy. Um, so that would be his specialty. We will um, help individuals who are experiencing trauma. I think he would be able to handle that very well. I'm not going to say that's his expertise, but, um, you know, we run into a lot of individuals with, you know, trauma and young individuals who, you know, you know parents are incarcerated and such. So I, I believe that we can help. Um, I would, I would, I would definitely help them. We don't turn down anybody. Reverend Julius Vanden here. Thank you, Malik. You did uh, for your presentation. It was excellent. Uh, I have worked personally with uh, Miss Tracy. Oh, okay. Juvenile chaplain. I have um, uh, continued to make referrals to beat the streets um, to kids that are being uh, released from the juvenile hall. 
uh, as well as our Tay population as well. So I definitely believe in the work of Beat the Streets and um, personalized approach that you all take. And so I think that's absolutely great. And um, I'd like to thank you again for, you know, starting with sharing uh, Tracy's story and how she organically started in this uh, from her heart. And I think that's one thing that makes this program really great that she saw a need another. And um, it has evolved and it's been about almost 20 years now. So I think, I think that's wonderful. So thank you, you've represented very well again. <clears throat> Thank you much. Appreciate it. And thank you again for your quote. Not only did was it an inspirational quote, but I felt it in my heart as well. So that's why I went. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is Nicole. I have one last question. Um, I know that you said that you um, we can submit via an intake form, but you also mentioned Salesforce, right? So for any providers that yes. have access to Salesforce and utilize that to send referrals, do you receive referrals from there as well, or just data tracking? Um, yeah, we just data tracking. We've been integrated it to receive like referrals through Salesforce yet. We're working on it, but yeah, so our referral is just through our website right now on our intake form. Thank you. Have any additional questions? One last question. Do you guys do any work around grief in general for those who may have lost a classmate or a family um, member um, to act of death or street violence? I'm sorry, can you hear the question? <clears throat> do you guys have anything set up for grief? For people who may Green. have been um, lost a family member or a classmate to street violence. Oh, I understand. Um, that's something that we would create a workshop for. So uh, in the future, if I see a lot of people who are they come in and are grief ridden or have lost a friend or family member, that's something definitely something that I will create a workshop around and then try to spread the word for that for them to attend. additional questions in the room? I, I'd like to say, this is Cynthia Zavala from Center for I want to say thank you for the work that you're, that you are doing in the community. I know that we have referred um, family members of the, of the folks that we're working with. And um, I wanted to acknowledge the atmosphere when you do walk into your site. It's very welcoming for anyone walking in. So I just want to say that I appreciate um, all the work that you're doing. Thank you. Online, Jamie, did you have a comment? Nope, I'm good, thank you. comments. Thank you once again, Malik, and we do look forward to a possible collaboration with Beat the Streets in the near future. Thank you. As we move on to our next item on the agenda, number five, um, another presentation today. I'm very, very excited and honored, and as always, I have a story uh, the story with uh, the safe return. Um, I think our presenter today was one of my first mentors, uh, CAB, and um, my search for organizations that were actually uh, preparing individuals to take on leadership roles within the community. Uh, safe return fell into to my uh, onto my radar again um, because I understand that as we look to recruit, we're also looking to recruit individuals with lived experience. And definitely myself having lived experience, I know that that is a valuable organization that kind of gets you ready for to move into coming in and taking a seat on a community advisory board. It's a real big step. 
And Shayla is definitely a mentor. And uh, thank you for being a part of CAP when I got here. Um, and thank you for coming today to do a presentation to give us a little more insight on what safe return process is all about. Thank you for having me, Dorothy. Um, it's a pleasure to be back. Um, I haven't been in the cat space in a minute. <laughs> See all these new faces. Um, but definitely want to give our presentation today just to let folks know more about the return project. Um, okay. <laughs> They get on me at our job. We're like, speak up. I'm like, I got a soft spoken voice. <laughs> um, but um, Safe Return Project is an organization of formerly incarcerated individuals um, and our allies working to strengthen the relationship with folks returning home uh, from incarceration. Uh, we understand that breaking the cycle of incarceration and crime will take a positive leadership, uh, will take positive leadership by uh, formerly incarcerated individuals. Um, Contributing to the greater community, we have carried out critical participatory action research. So what we do, um, instead of like taking on the role of staying what our community needs, we actually get out, we do door knocking, we have a long list of uh, survey questions, um, and we go through reports to see what our actual community needs. Um, and we produce a, a report off of that, and then we actually reach out to elected officials to get those recommendations passed. Um, so we do a lot of community organizing, policy advocacy, um, to build community power and foster our biggest work. We can go to the next one. Here's our mission statement. So the Safe Return Project mission is to end mass incarceration um, and mass criminalization of Black people and people of color and to reenfranchise individuals and communities that have been disenfranchised by the criminal legal system um, as a result of criminalization, racial disparities, and poverty. Um, we accomplish those goals through, again, community organizing, research, policy advocacy, and we invest deeply in our leadership development of those directly impacted by the criminal justice. So we offer a number of programs at the Safe Return Project. One of our big ones is our Boy Fellowship, which is basically a 12-month paid internship with us. Um, we love this program. We're actually getting ready to have a graduation ceremony, which I'll talk, talk about later. Um, but in the first six months, we basically have folks, um, we're able to hire all five individuals who are formerly incarcerated. The first six months, they spend on building themselves back up. So if they need housing, if they need driver's license, if they need healing, counseling, we provide them with life coaches. Um, we have what's called a flex day on Friday so that they can take time to actually go out and get those things done that they need. Um, and we pay them to do it. And then the last six months, they basically are shadowing our organizers where they learn more about policy advocacy, how to become members of boards such as this, um, and really how to advocate for themselves and build leadership in the kind of community. The next one we have is our Collective Impact, which is a sh more condensed version of our Richard Boy Fellowship. Um, both of the same thing, we do deep dive in healing and trauma. We do deep dive into um, organizing, um, and we spend about four weeks to talk about uh, violence prevention. Um, our Credible Messenger is our mentorship program in which we uh, offer to our youth. Um, we actually have uh, ongoing um, sign-ups for folks to become mentors, and we have an ongoing enrollment of mentees. Um, you can go to the next slide. And then we have what's called our Latinx Men's Group, which is not really Latinx Men's Group. <laughs> um, it's actually open to everyone, but as you can see in the picture, a lot of Latinx men actually attend the group, so they just kind of took it on their own. But it is open for everybody. It's all-inclusive, uh, Black, Brown, anybody is welcome in that group, and it's 14 and up. Um, and we participate in a series of workshops uh, focusing on culture, humility, and resilience. And then we have our sister circle, um, which is basically a women's support group. Um, it's for young women and um, non-performing individuals. Uh, we talk about uh, 
life and career coaching, trauma and healing. Um, we go out on excursions. Um, we do two retreats a year, which we're planning for right now. It's a weekend retreat where we go out into nature. We really like get in tune with our somatic work, our healing work. Um, and we offer, of course, a life coach and counseling in that. So again, just to talk a little bit more about our programs, um, the Rich Boy Fellowship, um, actually I won't reiterate everything, but um, it is open to folks who are, I believe, 18 and up. Um, we just chose our five new fellows. Our um, current fellows are graduating May 31st. It is open to public. It will be at our current office. Um, and that's when they will be passing the torch to our new fellow. Um, and like I said, it's a great program, um, especially because you are essentially getting paid the first six months to, to really take care of yourself. And that's our, we actually went to Monterey. That's our lovely team, um, some of our staff, and we uh, allow participants to bring their families, staff bring their family. We just, you know, hang out, relax, and um, yeah. Um, so the purpose of the fellowship is to foster personal transformation and self-sufficiency pathways. Um, our audience is formerly incarcerated individuals. You have to have some type of background to get into this program. Um, the objective is to demonstrate safe returns principles, strengthen life skills, create pathways for self-sufficiency, develop strategic uh, strategies as skilled organizers. So again, that last six months of the program, you get into organizing work. Um, our learning objective is to overcome obstacles to build self-confidence, connect with community partners for holistic education, embody commitments to community and accountability, um, access and improve relationships and conflict. So a big part of that is uh, talking about our non-risk factors. So um, that's basically how we teach folks how to stay alive and free. We use a alive and free model. Um, and to develop positive uh, post-fellowship action plans. So once the fellowship is over, it's not we're not going to just throw you to the wolves. We actually create a um, a fellowship action plan. So what is it you want to accomplish outside of the fellowship? How can we support you in that? Um, because we know like reentry is is hard sometimes. Um, formerly incarcerated, it took me a while to get a job. Um, so we don't want people to fail after leaving the fellowship. So we try to set them up with a pathway for success. Next slide. So um, we've had six cohorts so far. Um, we, um, we started back in 2019. Um, we had over 200 applicants and because it is a, a grant funded um, program, we only are allowed to bring on between five to seven people. So we've had 31 participants. We had 21 who graduated. We have two honorary graduate uh, graduates. Um, unfortunately, we lost two of our members due to gun violence. Um, actually, one of them was uh, right here in Antioch. Um, the other one was in Richmond. Um, and then we've um, hired on seven of those folks that went through our fellowship. So again, making that plan for success. Um, and then out of those who graduated, we have five who actually received uh, job offers upon graduation. Um, some of them actually got hired on to different organizations like um, um, All of Us Are None um, and things of that sort. Um, Young Women Freedom, Freedom Center, um, one of our graduates is now working there. Um, and then we had three participants who actually completed college and got licensed. We have one that just finished his real estate license. Um, the other one is in school, Tiani, who's in school right now and on the path to graduate and wants to go to a four-year college. So we're working with him on that plan. Um, you can go to the next slide. And as I mentioned, um, the fellowship is coming up May 31st, 5.30. The doors will be open and we will get started around 6 p.m. And it's uh, at our safe return office, which is 1011 McDonald Avenue in Richmond. <laughs> and so our collective impact um, began in 2015. Um, it's committed to investing in personal transformation for incarcerated men 
women and youth working to build their lives in Richmond throughout Contra Costa County. So when we first got started, we had two cohorts. One was in Richmond, one was in um and one was in West County, one was in East County. But now that you know, COVID hit us, everything's virtual, we combined everything together. <laughs> um, we actually have some folks who are out of state who is taking our course right now, which is amazing to see that program grow um, due to you know being on Zoom and virtual. Um, but it's really a, a great way to like just give people the tools to um, advocate for themselves, um, to get that human journey that they need. Um, and just get involved in the work. So we've had um, over 20, I mean, over 200 participants, including family members and faith leaders engaged in power building experiences. We focused on community organizing, violence prevention, and personal transformation strategies. Uh, we equipped formerly incarcerated individuals with leadership skills. Um, topics include community organizing, violence prevention, and personal transformation. Um, we also cover civic engagement and political education, which we just added political education to our curriculum about two years ago. It was a, a curriculum I created. <laughs> um, and that curriculum basically just shows folks how governance works and how we can co-governance. So how do we hold our elected officials accountable? How do we become members of bodies like this? Um, and really have a seat at the table. Um, and then they all graduate and receive a honorarium at the end of our program, because we want to honor folks for spending that 15 weeks. 15 weeks is a long time. We want to honor folks for spending 15 weeks with us um, and give them a, a little site in our honorarium at the end. Next slide. <clears throat> So again, um, the workshops include violent prevention, which we use the Omega workshop, um, basically a lot of free um, model. We cover trauma and healing, organizing for change. Um, we also talk about media movement workshop, where folks can see how um, media shapes our movement. So even from way back in the day, um, up until present, like how do we use media to get the word out, spread the word, spread awareness and then we talked about political education. Um, last year, we did add a substance and youth workshop. Um, where it was a more of a pilot one, um, and we're thinking about bringing that one back. Next slide. You can go to the next one. <clears throat> So um, our Credible Messenger program is, um, you know, why become a Credible Messenger mentor is to shape the next generation of advocates, um, join our vision to reinvest in youth and grow leaders who bring life and experience as assets to future challenges. Um, folks that are eligible for this one is ages 12 to 18, um, and they have to have at least one of the items on this list, so low school attendance or GPA, enrollment in continuation school, substance use, homelessness, or unstable living, um, and any police contact, including questioning, interview, citation, or arrest. And then our sister circle, um, again, it's just a group of um, for women and young girls and non-gender conforming individuals to come together and get the support that they need. Um, a lot of folks in this um, cohort is actually DV, um, so domestic violence um, survivors. Um, and we just, you know, we use that place to just re check in and, and provide resources. So we hold healing circles. We do violence prevention and intervention workshops. Um, we go over to Richard Boyd uh, Fellowship Risk Factors. Um, we also create vision boards. We do referrals, so we refer out to folks who need housing, um, support with, you know, training order, things of that nature. Um, also, our NA and AA referrals. Um, we do nature outings, um, and then we have one-on-one -on -one meetings, and then gender-specific recruitment. And that was our actually first outing. We went to the Smash Room in San Francisco, and basically, turning our, our 
pain into beauty. So we went in, wrote a little message on the plate, smashed it, went into the next room and created this beautiful work of art um, by just throwing paint at each other. It was fun. Um, definitely fun. I recommend people to go. You'll release a lot of stuff. <laughs> And then our Latinx support group, which again is not just men, it is open to all individuals. Um, this workshop uh, is for 14 and up. Um, we do have a great mixture in this work workshop. Um, a lot of young folks, as well as that transitional age youth, but then we also have our OGs in there as like the big brother, big sister. So I love this group. Um, they are. They tear our office up all the time, y'all. <laughs> young people are just kind of, but uh, I love this group. They are building like this bond and family kind of dynamic. So um, again, they go over the vital um, prevention and intervention, personal ecology, professional and personal development. Um, we've actually had youth come to school work, like done with school. Like, I don't want to go back. And we encourage them to go back. They are doing great. They re-enrolled. So we really um, strive to like build up that success for them. Um, and one of the outings that they actually went to was the San Francisco. A lot of folks have never been out of Richmond, but this group is a lot of Richmond residents and they've never been out of Richmond. So they actually took a, a outing to um, San Francisco Giants game, which was amazing. Gave them their own little personal debit card or gift card. We teaching them financial literacy too, because some of them was trying to swipe their card. <laughs> it was like you use it all. So just teaching them how to like, you know, grow into that adulthood. Um, we had a few guest speakers. We had Melvin Willis, who is our Richmond City Council member. We had Ladania Flowers, who was actually a former former um, organizer with our um, organization. We had Claudia Jimenez, who's actually a Richmond City Council member. Um, her say, Jose Cordon, who's an artist, he's a poet, he came and talked to them. And then we had Spencer on Juvenile and Criminal Justice who came in and did a, a, a speaking for them. Next slide. And so how it all got started, um, it started through capacity building and research and advocacy, um, which then turned into community organizing to support grassroots leadership, research on um, community needs and policies, advocacy for improved policies and programs. Next slide. And we also, um, we started off with the Invest in People Not Prison campaign, um, where we were diverting funds from the, the Sheriff's Office to actually go to reentry services. Um, you can go to the next slide. And then it then trickled down into our racial justice uh, task force, ending, out, ending juvenile fines and fees in Contra Costa County, um, youth justice reinvestment, which we were able to uh, divert 9.6 million into uh, justice reinvestment. And then we do a lot of uh, work with the public defenders a lot for our clean slate. Um, we were able to um, reclassify over 2,000 residents in addition to clearing over 20,000 in traffic debt through the homeless court process. Um, this work included securing log scans for over 100 residents through, um, uh, I'm sorry, residents in Contra Costa and supporting over 500 formerly incarcerated residents uh, through Contra Costa through the record expungement um, clean slate program. Shout out to the Entry Success Center and Lisa Khan partnering with us. Um, here are some things we also uh, fought for. So big thing to, to point out here is a resentencing and restoring the voting rights, um, AB 1595, and of course our Fair Chance Expansion and um, Protection Act, and then our Office of uh, Youth and Community Restoration. So some of the policy changes, uh, Spencer term champion was to increase funding for reentry housing, develop specific and sustainable reentry housing programs, and then ban the box of housing applications, which we're actually trying to expand right now. Um, the fair chance housing in Richmond uh, right now is really um, centered to uh, like government entities, but we're trying to make it where all landlords have to follow the rules. Next. 
And so what are we doing now? We have our gender justice, youth justice reinvestment, leadership development, grassroots organizing. We have our DA accountability table, which we meet with the DA quarterly um, to discuss concerns in our community. Uh, we have housing equity, civic engagement, budget justice, advocacy, and then of course our participatory action research. And then this is how you can get involved. Um, you can get involved through our local organizing committee, which we're starting up again. It's basically a meeting um, of community leaders coming together to discuss concerns in the community and how to overcome those challenges. We have our collective impact, our Richard Boyd. You can always become a member by signing up for our um, newsletter, um, attend meetings and events. You can join our mess uh, credible messenger program by becoming a mentor. Um, join our sister circle, our Latinx support group. And this is my lovely information. And I do have cards. Thank you. Thank you all for allowing me to come. Well, thank you, Shayla, for the presentation. Very, very informative. There's a lot of information there. It's collective. It's research. It's all the stuff that you definitely um, need. And what I would like to do is go do a round table and with our board members, whether they have questions or input. I'll start on this side. I thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I'm familiar with the work of Safe Return Project. Um, and then, director, a very beautiful, touching story. And I, um, I think when people make from that level of empathy and truth, uh, it's seen in their work. And so, mm -hmm. thank you for um, being part of such a great organization. Thank you. So I'm going to ask our questions because he made a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Not more than one question. Okay. okay, so for the Safe Circle, is it for all women or for domestic violence only? Oh, all women. Okay, and then are those in person or via Zoom? It's hybrid. Hybrid. Okay, and how often are those meetings? So Sister Circle is um, every Tuesday from 3 to, no, sorry, 3.30 to 5. 3.30 to 5? Mm-hmm. And are this is these programs only for those that was formerly incarcerated, no. or is it open to their families? It's open to families. Do you have to ever have been incarcerated? No. Not for that one. The only one you have to be um, formerly incarcerated for is our Rich Boy Fellowship. Okay. And is that for all of um, Contra Costa or just West? I know we focused a lot on Rich. It's West County um, preferred, but it is open. We won't turn anybody away. Mm -hmm. So I could check out the, the system. Okay, I'm going to check it out with the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we won't, because of the severity of that group, we don't post anything on social media unless we got connected to you guys who can post that picture. Um, but everything is confidential in house. We don't really advertise it on our social media. Because Um, so I'm a Richard Boy um, fellowship graduate, and like it was a truly life changing experience. Um, it prepped me to be in boards like this, and and to do the other work that I do in the community. If it hadn't been for a safe return, I, I probably wouldn't be in this space right now. Like and doing the other work that I'm doing. So uh, I love the work they do. I work for them too. So I'm <laughs> um, thank you for coming, Shayla. I appreciate it. I was just I was waiting like. How do you get involved? <laughs> <laughs> right? oh, but yes, I, I will be attending some of your meetings and events. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. Yes. I'm just thoroughly just in love with the project. Um, and amazingly, I didn't know, realize, and I was in the process, but we had a board member. Yeah. And um, it just put the pieces together. And, you know, I said, well, they, you have to come and present me, Shayla. <laughs> of course. And I'm just, you know, this is just, uh, it does my heart good. Because, you know, having been justice impacted, and yeah. now that there's a, a pathway for individuals, you know, it's refreshing for me. Because I think for me, it's been 40 years since I was incarcerated. 
but during the time that you know I was going through that process, there were no doors or no avenues. Mm -hmm. And I'm just grateful that you were part of that and that you can bring that information to us and also open the door if you want to participate. There's things mm -hmm. that we can do and take a step further. And I encourage board members to become active participants in organizations that we hear about. You know, go to the graduations, talk to some of them who are actually a part of it, and just kind of like massage that and let that's how we also identify a cab mm -hmm. and explain to them what cab represents. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> so I have excitement, I have questions, I have a question. <laughs> so well, I, 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 yeah, so I, I first want to piggyback off what Ozzy said earlier because you were my mentor as well. And when she brought up her name, I said, she she is the one that helped me with the ambassador. My family, <laughs> and I was scared. So I love you. Because <laughs> she helped the whole ambassador. Me to now y'all pro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she was amazing in cabinet. It is so nice to see you again. Um, I'm excited for your presentation because you have no idea how many folks are asking me about safe return. I've heard about it, but I did not know that you did this much. Mm -hmm. Um, I also love the part about the advocacy because just also in some of us in justice impact are involved. Um, one key thing I like to tell a lot of the participants I work with learn how to do advocacy. So now that yeah. I know that there's actually a program I didn't know that was there, yeah. um, to send them to to be able to do that because we do need to learn how to speak for ourselves and also be at the table for policy change. And saying that, <laughs> as you do work with the justice involved individuals, do you have what is your capacity in working with 290s and 288s? Um, what is your capacity? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like I mean, I do want to make sure <laughs> yeah. There's a sex offenders. Uh, okay. So, so 288 are individuals that fall below the age of 18, and then 290s are those that fall before. Okay. Um, Especially with 290s, because there's a lot of stigma around that charge, and there's different tiers, and some are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. severe, and then there are some that are not. Yeah. Um, and teach them how to advocate, because there's a lot of uh, stigma around them representing housing and employment. So have you stepped into that yeah. realm yet? Okay. <laughs> so one of our participants who went through this fellowship um, actually had a record okay. of that nature, um, and now he's an organizer with us. Okay. So how do we send them for, how does an individual send a referral to you for participants? Email, yep. Got it. Email me. Um, you feel free to give out that number that's on that card. Um, they can always uh, go to our website and there's a link. It'll say info at safeturnprg.org. They can send whatever they need and then our admin will take a look at that email and refer them to the person that handles Okay. Well, I'll follow with you afterwards, yeah. and I'm gonna follow with you for some other board for another presentation. Okay, absolutely. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have a question. I just thank you for taking the time to present to us. Uh, the work looks really exciting and promising for the community, and hopefully someday something like that will exist, like in East and Central County. But we are countywide. So okay. We'll let you know, we are countywide. So we do partner with Lift Up Contra Costa, who has a office in Antioch. So we share office with them. So if we need to do workshops out there, then just put in a request to use their social media. So that's even better. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then a lot of our stuff is hybrid too. So thank you. I think you did an excellent presentation. And Latanya asked all the questions I had pretty much how to get involved in the system. You know, I'm a real advocate of women's support movements. And that group is also still on this They a very unique group. <laughs> Most of them are related to each other, but they're the folks outside of their relationship or uh, relative, just like. We just come together. That's what it is. Sisterhood. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Are there any questions from or comments from the room? Um, and that we center for us. Um, yeah, I want to thank for the work you did. I do have a client who just went through the Richard and Force Fellowship. Oh, nice. And um Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jill and Jill are in other names. That center does have a for our alpha cohort, and oftentimes when individuals want to stay engaged or go further, um, you know, the 
fellowship program is great um, for our members to get involved with the environmental advocacy, stay involved in the community. You're our neighbors. We're always like, go across the street, let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be there for Queen Slate. <laughs> Any comments, other comments in the room? Hi, I'm Alondra. I just say thank you for your presentation. Very informative. I look to hope to um, getting some more information offline and submitting an email for the email presentation, excuse me, email newsletter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shayla. Thank you for having me. And I do have to dip out. I'm actually late for another meeting, but okay. call me anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Moving on to our next agenda item, number six. We will begin having a discussion with, around the leak entry board newsletter. So we, uh, this is a, a, a item that we're bringing back um, to the child body. I think the body wanted to have a little bit more conversation um, around the reentry board of this newsletter. Um, during the last meeting, uh, we all had an opportunity to review or preview um, previous issues, uh, learn a little bit about the backstory on the newsletter. And so we brought it back because our understanding that you guys want to have a little bit more conversation around um, um, how the newsletter is distributed, other ways to either enhance or strengthen it. So I want to bring it back for any further discussion that you guys need to have. I'll say I'll see the, the, the add on to your emails that go out about the uh, like that in addition to no. I think we were wanting to have a discussion as far as how we could extend that to other community based organizations to have some type of input. Um, and also having some input as far as uh, uh, highlighting in the, the way the uh, paper is set up. Uh, it's always a highlighted, um, whether it's an individual, a couple, spotlighted, and how that can might be ex extended or expanded. Definitely trying to um, utilize this format as a process for more visibility of CAB and how CAB could actually uh, be a part of that um, process. And it's open for the board members to have a discussion and enter. I think one of the biggest takeaways was, um, like I just said to Patrice, was how we get that out there to all of our providers to be able to add feedback. Like if they have someone that they want to be on that, but that they want to uplift and send it out with the news blabs from RJ was one of the ways to do it. Um, and how I don't know if all cat members get that or not, but the the our e newsletter, yeah, I believe all of you are on the um, email list for that. So uh, so if they if a cat member see that newsletter and they want to respond and highlight maybe someone they're working with, they can do so. That. Oh, just to clarify, so the two newsletters we're talking about now. So there's an ORJ e newsletter where they're just updates, right? Updates about different events and things that are happening. And I think in one of our previous. Um, 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 e newsletter blast. We did highlight for Second Chance Month in April, right. highlighted the reentry voices newsletter. Okay. But the newsletter itself had been circulating, gosh, probably since 20 and had it on because both the Success Center and the network. And so Tiffany's in the room as well. Um, they can speak to, um, I, I can't remember how far back it's, it's a while. Uh, let's just say pre COVID is for sure. <laughs> Yeah. First okay. edition, and, 2017. Yeah. And the original, and again, the original intent for the newsletter was to have um, um, 
a resource that can be passed around in the um, three detention facilities, right? Um, and due to the large printing jobs, um, in addition to having this circulated in these jail facilities, it is also to go out to other community uh, organization offices or whatever the case may be. So um, I think since then, they've just continued to do uh, the work. They work with um, a, a media consultant, a vert vertical plane, who is, uh, uh, oh, I Ronald, Ronald thank you, um, who does the interviews and collecting a lot of the information and does the design of the, of the newspaper format, is in a newspaper format, um, and then gets that out uh, to folks. So um, Pat and Tiffany can probably, I don't know if anyone from the network is on, can probably speak to the, the process of collecting um, stories and how that gets selected and all those that kind of jazz. Am I on? <laughs> Take it away. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, or yes, uh, morning, I'll say, uh, close to the afternoon, everyone. I'm Pat Mims, uh, Rubicon Programs. Uh, I oversee the uh, uh, Reentry Success Center in Richmond. Uh, in collaboration with HR 360, uh, we've been uh, starting with uh, Patrice and uh, uh, now Charmaine. We have been working on the uh, the reentry voice. I have to first say, uh, Madam Chair, uh, thank you uh, and cab body for bringing this up um, and uh, wanting to expand the footprint of our communications of reentry services uh, in Contra Costa County. I think this is very important uh, to the individuals that we serve, as well as the community at large uh, who actually don't know much about reentry services. Uh, so expanding this footprint will give them an opportunity to read on their own uh, what's really actively happening uh, in real time uh, and support their loved ones uh, that they may not want to reach out to county agencies or uh, CBOs uh, because of the stigma of incarceration. So thank you for bringing this up. Uh, Voices has been going on since 2017. Uh, we've had 22 editions uh, since that time. Uh, even through, through COVID, we were reaching out to different organizations and uh, different members, uh, and I say members uh, of the RSC and participants of uh, the Central and East County uh, to participate in sharing stories, uh, sharing their experience through the reentry services, uh, CBOs sharing uh, the programs and services, uh, and some heartfelt stories uh, that have come out. We've been uh, more so in this small container uh, doing this work uh, and actually uh, looking uh, for ideas as to how we can broaden uh, the, the work that we've been doing and highlight even more uh, uh, agencies uh, and uh, whoever wants to be a part of this. At this particular time, if you would like to have a story highlighted, you can definitely reach out to Charmaine or myself uh, at the RSC, and uh, uh, we will definitely put you on the list of stories uh, because we do this well in advance uh, to get the publication out. It has to be sent to New York, uh, uh, to be to become print, um, it's a big process. It starts with us. Uh, it starts with getting the stories, then the editing, uh, then the approval uh, from the content uh, from the sheriff's office to the community. Uh, and the reason that there's approval from the sheriff's office is they want to approve the content that's coming in to the individuals that are inside to uh, ensure that things are appropriate. Uh, uh, for the individuals that are inside. Uh, once that is done, uh, we put a link up on the uh, reentry uh, uh, website, and we uh, you can hit that link. Uh, thank you for putting the link into uh, the minutes, because if you click on that link, you will also be able to see all of the uh, 
previous editions that have been out thus far. Uh, so I'm giving you this history so that I can bring you up to where we are in this discussion uh, about broadening the approach, uh, um, uh, the reach of uh, communications with voices. Voices, uh, I think, has uh, been underutilized, uh, I'll say. And I, I think this is a prime time for us to, to take a look at it and, and move it forward. So I hope that opens up enough discussion to get us going. <laughs> I have a question. Can you go over, this is Nicole, can you um, go over that process again from when you said um, you guys sent it over to New York? Yes. So what happens is uh, we have a meeting, Charmaine, uh, my, uh, Charmaine the uh, contractor, Vertical Plane and myself, uh, we discussed what topics we'd like to, to uh, include in each edition. Uh, after uh, we have that discussion, uh, our contractor goes out into the community, does the interviews, uh, brings back the stories, we take time to edit those stories, um, add to uh, or take away from, depending upon uh, the length of the content. Uh, because this is only a, a two-page fold, uh, we can't include everything we would like to in each edition. Um, certainly, like we'd like to expand uh, the paper. And uh, um, from there, uh, we send it over to the sheriff's office uh, for their approval, because the initial intent of this uh, uh, this newspaper was to go, or this newsletter was to go into the institution. Uh, once the sheriff approves the content, then it comes back to myself, in which uh, I send over the vertical plane. They send uh, that uh, particular piece out to a very affordable. Uh, printer uh, press, and uh, they send back the copies. Uh, at this particular time, uh, we're printing 2,000 copies. When those copies arrive to the RSC, we uh, send out 250 per institution, uh, split the rest between HR 360 and uh, the Reentry Success Center, and then we distribute those copies into the community. Uh, so the sheriff distributes, distributes them throughout the county jails. We distribute them throughout uh, the community. Uh, the Reentry Success Center also distributes them out through uh, the state prisons as well for individuals that are returning to Contra Costa County and have written uh, the center through the Staying Connected program. Thank you. And all, uh, all of those, uh, uh, these prints are, there's a link on the RSC website uh, to obtain a copy as well. And just recently, uh, I must add, Nicole, uh, we started uh, sending that electronic uh, link over to the sheriff and they're putting them on the tablets that they're allowing individuals to use inside. Uh, so they're inside on tablets. Thank you, Kat, for um, explaining the process. I do have one question, and that's relative to when you began, <clears throat> when you explained that the specific purpose of the uh, Reentry Voice newsletter was to go into the three detention facilities. My question is whether or not um, individuals that are in custody have any uh, are they able to contribute anything in, to that paper? Is there an avenue for contributions? Maybe uh, might have a polling, or maybe they might have um, you know, something they would like to submit. Is that something that has been uh, part of that process or something that you might consider? It actually has. On, uh, in each edition, uh, Towards the end, there is a, a call out for poems. There's a call out for art. Um, there's a call out uh, for support uh, as well. Uh, 
if an individual would like resources. So yes, uh, we have done that. I can, uh, there hasn't been a high volume of uh, individuals sending poems in or artwork. Um, and that's something that uh, we can definitely work on now that uh, we've expanded services within uh, the county jails and the partnerships have grown. Um, so that's something that we can look at as well as how we can uh, uh, get more people that are inside involved, uh, whether it be through uh, some type of game, some type of, uh, uh, there are so many ideas that could come up to expand uh, their artwork uh, and their poems coming out. Thank you for um, adding that. I think that that is also an incentive for individuals who are actually being able to, I think it's a great idea as well, schools out to um, being able to get it on the tablets inside of the uh, facilities. And uh, having that avenue where individuals can feel motivated, sometimes that's a great uh, incentive for individuals that are in custody. I know for my own personal thing, my personal history, that probably would have been something that I might would have liked to have written about. Uh, and maybe, you know, just an incentive for individuals while they're in custody. Absolutely. I totally agree. And and that's something that I just recently had a conversation with uh, around reentry voices, uh, incentivize uh, individuals that contribute uh, and how we could possibly do that. Again, this is all uh, uh, based around uh, a budget. Uh, right now, it's a small budget. Um, hopefully, we can have a discussion uh, in the following fiscal year as to how we can increase um, and make this a, a, just a, a more robust uh, communication uh, for the community. Any other questions in reference to the um Entry voice newsletter from board members. I'll try to decide the room this time. This is the point of question. Thank well, so I, I will say this in closing, look out, we'll be coming to interview some of you soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. For, thank you. And if, if I could add one uh, note, uh, so CAB has been funding um, the creation of the reentry voices newsletter now for several years. Um, so it is part of your uh, budget request that we look at every year. Um, I think um, the total is it 15,000 or 20,000 you're starting to that. No further questions or comments. We can move on to item number seven on our agenda to discuss finalized outreach assignments for recruitment. Ariana, is that something that you're going to help us with? Yeah, this this agenda item was brought back up last time. We got we didn't get through it. I have a drafted list of um, organizations that the board could reach out to. Um, for for recruitment, did you want me to give those to you now for you guys to discuss? Uh, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, probably looking, I think the process would probably be to, uh, if you have that list, to pull it up for us and take a look at it. Uh, I think it was in one of our agenda packets. I think the next step would be for board members to take a look and if interested, to uh, take on an assignment for one of the uh, organizations or agencies that are going to be listed on that list. Mm -hmm. 
Are you included in the agenda so I can't um, post it on the Since I always try to lead by example, I will delve in and take two. And uh, I don't want everyone else to fight over the four that's going to be left. I'm going to take the underground scholars. You know, I'm sorry. And nobody online has it either. Okay, I'm so sorry. Let's back up. We have a list, and on the list, we have a contact list for recruitment. And this was initiated on Thursday, April 11th. The first name, uh, the first uh, organization is Contra Costa County Rising Scholars. Um, we have um, the program manager is on the list that could be contacted. Program manager for achieving equitable outcomes. The second individual on the list is also the Contra Costa Rising Scholars. The program manager contact information is on the list. The third organization is Contra Costa College, the Professor of Administration of Justice. The name and contact information is on the list. The next organization on the list is Contra Costa College, the Professor of Political Science. That contact information is on the list. The next Organization is also Contra Costa College. The professor of pre law studies is on that list. The next organization on the list is Underground Scholars, and that's with UC Berkeley. And the last organization is also Underground Scholars. Um, both the executive director and then the second Underground Scholars is the associate director. Information is on the list. I have a question. I have a couple questions. So um, are we, the goal is for us to reach out to these individuals to recruit these individuals to, to be part of CAP or? We're talking just about recruitment and open space for? Uh, recruitment and open space. Uh, for my reference, um, the professors listed here generally at the community colleges, they have requirements for field studies okay. to actually participate in government by the means. So that would be a great uh, avenue for them to get interested and involved. It's also talking with them, with the different individuals listed. It will be an opportunity to get their students also involved because a lot of times we have re-entry students, which meaning they have a, an absence of attending. So you have older students as well who might be interested in doing some community outreach and service within their community. So we have a whole resource, a network of students right. here who could be uh, a, a network for us to recruit. I agree. But I think that it would be it would behoove the board members to utilize this opportunity to massage those communities and get back to get some uh, some experience in recruitment for CAP because that is part of our responsibilities to get more. Uh, we have how many members now? We should have a fifteen body and. Is crucial now because you see it's very difficult sometimes for us to have form. So the next thing what we have to do, we have to go out into our communities because they're not signing up, coming into the front door. We have to go and massage them, ask them, uh, generate emails to communicate. And that's just why on this list we have email addresses, we have phone numbers. And I think, you know, um, this is a volunteer for being on the board, whether with a community based organization. Myself, I'm retired. I just suitably show up and I'm willing to take on some other responsibilities. And that's why I suggested that I would take two because I have I am an underground scholar from UC Berkeley. So I have that that relationship. And if any others might have relationships within the bandwidth of the organizations that are listed here, that they, you could be freely, you know, acceptable to say, well, I might be willing to take on this part. And that's why this is being brought back to the board. 
Um, no, I would, I would just ask to just to give myself clarity. And then the, the second question I had is, um, I think it's amazing because we do need to do more footwork, but I definitely agree with you. Um, the second question I, I have is since um, we have several different contacts with one organization, kind of like how you took to maybe, you know, kind of like how we do the ambassador, reaching out to them with an individual, maybe setting a call and we have like a script on what we want. Not, we don't have to write a script, but like verbiage in reference to how we want to have those conversations um, around CAB, like maybe the presentation or what is our, I mean, maybe it is something that we got to work on. I'm just asking. <laughs> I mean, because I know we have some stuff already that can be pulled, but just, just, um, you know, we all are not out there just saying what we want. Is there something like that? That Because, I mean, to me, it's, it's each one of us taking somebody and one person calling Rising Scholar and I'm calling, it, it, it can confuse individuals if two different people are calling. So maybe buddying up and taking it on with somebody and reaching out and set company. Maybe coordinated like the ambassadors or something, you know, bringing that data back. That's a great idea, Nicole. Um, no, I don't want to lead it. Don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll really go there and I'll reach. <laughs> and I thought the time. I think that's a great idea. Uh, I think because this is new, I think that um, first of all, we have to find a consensus that individuals are willing to do that. That's the first thing. And then we have to decide uh, if they're if you're willing to, to partner up because uh, we have schedule conflicts, we have work conflicts, we have a lot of different things. So there has to be a willingness from the board members to participate. And so that means we have to have feedback from the board members as to what you feel about this. Is it something that you're willing to add to your plate? Well, I like the point that Nicole had made and because like, we do speak to them, we want to be effective too. We want to make sure that we prevent everything you know, correctly to, to really encourage people to want to join too. So it would be to have like a script or talking points or. Yeah. To so know like the initial call or email, the follow up um, and what it entails. I'll say the same thing. Yeah. That's the big thing that we're all making the same points. Yeah. You know, not my personal, not hers, but this is CAB and these are the points that we want to make. Yeah, because we want to be effective. Yeah. yeah. Very clear. You could probably ask Lauren. I think it's an amazing idea to get out there on the long So I, I like it. So the next step will be who will be willing to uh, help organize a script but, um, to participate. Well, first of all, who's willing to actually take on the assignment? And then we'll talk about the script. Meaning, like, oh, yes, you want to participate. Be. Just think oh. something like doing the yeah. best, or it's the same thing, but we're reaching out to the community for, uh, for recruitment. For recruitment. We're yeah. looking for a, a base of uh, where we can have members standing ready to step into these seats. I'm the start of this side of the room for instance. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm meditating. So as soon as she said pass it to community, uh, my brain's still going. So oh, I was just messing with you. I was, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, but I think it's important and whatever I can do to support. I sometimes have I didn't hear Latanya. I said I concur with what he said. I didn't hear you. I said I concur with what he said. Oh, I, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> We're open to being collaborative. Okay. Oh. Open to being collaborative. Okay, yeah. I didn't hear. You know, I'm listening to hear you guys talk because you're part of the board. We have to communicate. Right. So for me, it's more about the structure, more about having everything outlined. Um, so that's kind of where the like it's a great idea, but then there's so many other components we haven't added. On like when is you know when are we trying to do this? When is the deadline? All of that stuff on top of what we're already doing. So when you're asking us to say it, I don't want to be excited and say yeah, and then be realistic and be like, now I'm stretching myself. So that's why I'm saying if we have the script that we have all because no one's volunteered to do the script. <laughs> what first said that we we're going to do the sign the script is not a, a challenge. The, the challenge is people speaking up and showing up and actually 
doing. Something. Right. I think the challenge is that we don't have all the information when we ask. We're asking additional questions. No one said that they didn't want to jump in. Everyone is saying we want to say the same thing. We want a script and we want to have an idea of what we're saying yes to. Let's narrow it down. When do we want to do this? Does that help you? When, when do we get the scripts? Like the whole thing, like we, when we married the ambassador, the ambassador was outlined. Right. So when you right. said that you knew every single thing from beginning to end. So I think that we're at the beginning, meaning the first the first question is, if we put all this together, who would want to participate? So before we just ask them to get on two cab, I believe, but Madam Chair is asking is before she even go deep diving into this and putting it together, who is willing to participate? That's the number one question. So if this is put together and somebody volunteers to put this together, who will show up with their boots on? Right. And I think to echo what Tanya was saying, <laughs> oh, so I, that, that. I think I'm still, when I was saying collaborative, because when Tanya was saying, I'm still on the ambassador meetings and trying to get that together. And uh, which well, it's not a commitment. We're just saying if it was put together. No, I know. But I mean, it's just as far as laying things out. I think right. The commitment to, you know, mm -hmm. Just have more discussion, collaborative discussion. I think that's what I'm saying. Okay, and, but that now we can take to a time where we give them our time to do that. And the participation part for me is easy. Remember, as me being the newest cab member, I don't speak cab yet. So <laughs> I, I definitely need a script. I definitely need a script. Right. So that's the mm -hmm. lens I'm looking at it from. If I can offer some assistance, um, I think. Um, one approach might be that, um, assuming that there are email addresses here, that each each member can take an assignment and email the respective contact, introducing yourself and saying we're actively recruiting um, applicants to sign up to join the advisory board here in Contra Costa County on public safety realignment. And what what that means? Would you be interested in sharing this with your network? So th there's just a, a a kind of a singular kind of like con uh, uh, um, correspondence about what you're looking for, and that you're asking folks to sit, submit their um, their applications. We can even give them a deadline because um, I know for OCEC's next meeting um, is that this month, yes. Yeah. Well, so if not this month, then maybe certainly for the June OCEC meeting, we can aim to get as many applications as possible. So that way we all will have right. a nice slate of, of, uh, of individuals to interview. Mm -hmm. So that's one way you can kind of structure it, uh, where it's not too um, onerous on your, on your time to reach out to folks. Now, if you feel more confident in having communicate, like having phone conversations, you're more than welcome to also call folks um, and put, put some language together. Actually, on your CAB website, it has really clearly stated what the commitments are, the you know the time um, times of the meetings, uh, who can apply, what's the application process. All of that is already available to you. So I, I, I think if we kind of pare it down so it doesn't feel like it's a real major onerous process for you, I think you'll you'll be okay. Now, another option, if you want to have a more robust outreach, you can think about or talk about doing presentations to, like, let's say, these various colleges within certain classes, right? And you have more one-to-one -one engagement with a group of students, or we heard the presentation for Safe Return Project. They have their cohorts and workshops that are going on where that might be an opportunity for a cab member to come and present. And CAP um, members in the past have done things like that. Uh, so there's a variety of ways that you can do, utilize uh, recruitment um, strategies, if you will, based on what you feel is most effective or not as so, um, uh, uh, not a heavy lift on who you like. Just wanted to throw that out there. You have CAP flyers too, right? You have CAP flyers. Ozzy, well. can I add something? Okay. okay, yeah. Yeah, so I've done a few reach outs to a few organizations like NAMI and I think some other um, organizations that's in the educational realm. And I can send you like an example of like the communication I use when I when I have reached out on behalf of CAB to recruit um, 
well, we were looking for transitional aid youth at the time, but um, anybody open to anybody um, who lives in the county or works in the county. So I can send that to the board if that will help. And also Jamie Janet had a comment that I would like to read. And she said, depending on what you're recruiting for, I have a strong connection with the basic needs coordinator for Contra Costa College. So that could be another um, place for you guys to reach out to. Thank you, Gary. And just to piggyback off of Gary on it, I get privy to some of that information that she forwards out. And as far as something that's customized, more like uh, email, those things are not really far fetched for someone to create. Uh, my primary concern was the, whether or not the board members were interested in, you know, taking on part of this as part of the recruitment. And I do understand that this is OCEC's responsibility as part of the recruitment outreach. But we thought that we would bring it to CAB because we're we're having issues with quorum. We do have uh, one person that's going to be uh, hopefully uh, at the CCP meeting on Monday, uh, Mark Long, 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 I thought it's pronounced Long, Long, mm -hmm. correctly. But what happened was we kept OCEP and vetting him straight through CAB because the, the crucial element of having uh, reserve board members. So they passed both the East and went straight to full cap because we need board members. And that's that's our primary right now. And we do have uh, another person who's ready to be uh, vetted to OCEC at our next meeting. So we do have two people coming on board soon, hopefully. But we do have a roster that's 15 board members, seats that are available. And we've had some meetings where we've had to hold up our meetings because of forum issues. And I realize everyone has commitments. Now, as part of my function, that is to reiterate the fact that we need more board members. And I will get off my and kind of check. I'll get off my don't have board those buttons <laughs> and move forward. The time check. Four minutes left. Four minutes left. So I guess we're going to table this and bring it back to OCEC. Yes. Yeah, make more sense. Okay. Let us deal with this. Very good. Moving on. Um, we have a, our next item is an update on county media policy that has been core pages 57 and 70. Um, this might be another lengthy um, discussion potentially. So, I, if, if I may, I recommend that uh, we hold this off to your to your next meeting. Um, but ultimately, the reason why I was brought before you all um, this conversation and questions related to uh, whether or not CAB can have its own social media account and posting and things of that nature. So, uh, as I say we will require further conversation, but some reference um, information is in your packet to review. Um, there were updates to the Brown Act. We reached out to the work of the board and they sent us back uh, information related to updates to the Brown Act regulations as it relates to advisory body members, um, usage of social media um, and prohibited uses, permitted uses, on and on and on. So um, we can discuss further after next meeting. Very good. Moving on. Thank you for that feedback. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. We will move on to review and discuss reports from CAP subcommittees and external meetings. First report from the Board of Supervisors meeting. Do you have any report out? I can just share really quickly that uh, the major items that would have uh, affected uh, or um, related to CAP is uh, that the Board of Supervisors hosted a, a budget hearing on April 22nd and 23rd, full day of um, budget presentations from every um just about every department in the county um following that was a discussion uh, or a presentation from um, our share uh sharing his uh quarterly oversight report there wasn't much public comment related to that report um, but you can find it online um he has basic sort of demographic information on bookings uh, in the jail as well as bookings by renting agencies um, other uh, data points related to the operations of um, the sheriff's office. So that is available for your review. 
And then if I can move into the next two, yeah, just want to take us on. Okay, because these, these are the big ones. Um, CCP, as um, you all may know, is scheduled for this Monday coming up at 1030 in this room. Um, at that meeting, uh, CAB members will be presenting finally a <laughs> proposal of uh, recommendations for the one-time $15 million allocation from the fund balance. Um, so um, that will be, that's, hopefully you all will be in attendance or at least attending via Zoom. Uh, and then uh, the CCP will consider approving Marcus DeWall as an applicant uh, to join the Community Advisory Board. There are a few other items as well. There's going to be a uh, quarterly update or, or reporting of um, financial reimbursements on AB 109 of expenditures um, to date. So that will be discussed. And it looks like there will also be a request from the district attorney's office to utilize some additional reserves um, toward a uh, task force related operations field of the law enforcement agency. So all to say the agenda was just posted today during this meeting. I did send it out to all of the uh, CAB members as well as some of our CBO um, providers and folks. So um, check that agenda packet and um, be sure to be in attendance for May 3rd. And we'll also be speaking for the new individual she mentioned, right? Marcus DeWall, yes, yes. Um, and then in terms of PPC, PPC met uh, last Monday. This Monday, this past Monday? Yes, that was last Monday, yes, okay. Um, and um, really brief meeting, um, there was an uh, update from our chief probation officer, Ethan McCrouse, um, uh, on uh, providing an annual update on the Juvenile Justice Coordinating Council. And then um, there was discussion about the um, PPC's work plan for the remainder of the year. Um, so uh, pretty short and sweet. Again, that, that sort of work plan you can find online uh, for the rest of 2024. And then for your knowledge, the CAB's presentation on uh, your recommendations for the one-time 15 million will be expected um, at the next PPC meeting in June. First Monday of the month at 10.30. Yeah. At 10.30 yeah. or morning? Yeah, okay, at 1 o'clock. So the first first Monday of the month at 1 p.m. We'll, we'll be sure to get that information to you in advance. 1 p.m. 1 p.m., okay. 2.30, 1 p.m. Yeah. And those meetings you can attend um, virtually, uh, even as a presenter. Typically, the members will hold the meeting in their respective district offices. So that will be Supervisor Joya and Supervisor Glover. And that's it. I'll make mine quick. It's about uh, AOD piggybacking off of Jill. You can have a <laughs> You have a bit better than me. Um, no, I just want to piggyback on what Jill was saying earlier that behavioral health will be hosting a community listen session throughout the four regions East, Central, South, and West, and Contra Costa County. Um, California has joined multiple national lawsuits against manufacturers, distrib distributors, and entities responsible for opiate epidemic. Um, and I brought a flyer, and I'm sorry for the fast of the time I have for outline to preach to y'all, but I brought a flyer. Any event that anyone wants more information and would like to be a part of the listening session, I brought information to share with y'all to take a picture or take with you. So this is definitely and nice. I shared it with Patrice, so she'll share it out with the group. So yes. I would just add to that that three east, west, and central are in person. The south County is virtual only. So if you are not in attendance in person, you are welcome to. You don't have to attend by region. They're just collecting input from the entire county on how to spend those funds. You said you already gave us a picture. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. Okay, the next item is for some measure at the CAP meeting at CAP 5. Um, what we did. There was a discussion of the list of priorities and recommendations that were going to the Board of Supervisors for the one time funding of $28 million. Um, one of the things that was brought to our forefront, uh, that I participated in, was actually bringing back from 2021 the need to have a focus on uh, services for our community communities, which also went as item number six. Um, we got on the um, funding um, process. 
Oh, okay. So Jill, I see you going that way. So that so that went to the Measure Act. Uh, did their presentation to the uh, Board of Supervisors during budget hearing. And the Board of Supervisors selected um, their choices for funding out of that. Um, there's an extra amount of money that's one time fund uh, that's anticipated to be available at the end of the fiscal year. So they did go ahead and allocate some of those funds. I thought, um, I'm not sure how many out of that list made it, but the Board of Supervisors have their process. And so I uh, felt like they did fund is a facilitator for Measure Act mm -hmm. to do a retreat, much like HABs, because Ozzy brought that forward, to really look at the mandates, what the county landscape looks like, so that in the next three year cycle, it can be really uh, 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 an evaluation done by a an outside facilitator that doesn't have an investment in some area of the county. Therefore, we're hoping things like the re-entry system can be lifted up higher um, because it was voted on and agreed to. That just the way that they were assigned things, it got dropped to the bottom, unfortunately. Um, and so uh, the Board of Supervisors do recommend that and they, they did approve the funding to be able to do that in the retreat. So that's really good news for Measure Act. Deal. I wasn't going to say that. But <laughs> you absolutely should take credit for yeah. that. It's an important one. And, and really, Ozzy is the first voice of re entry that's been sitting on Measure X. And I think that's super important for you all to know. And also, we selected a chair, a new chair, and a new vice chair, Roxanne uh, Villo Garza. I'm hoping not to assassinating her name. She moved from vice chair to chair. And vice chair is Rachel Rosemont. And um, I, there's one thing that I would like to bring to your attention for the board members to read, um, and that is the attachment. It's uh, entitled Results Based Accountability, a Roadmap for Program Performance. I've learned a lot since I've attached this because it's been a part of my research, because it's a part of our due diligence as a board to become involved in our RFP process and what it looks like. And because I'm a lay person in this arena and I don't understand SAFE because I've never seen it, most of you who work in that capacity know what SAFE is. So I've done an evidence-based uh, uh, program and things. I'm, I'm learning. So I'm gathering all this information so that I can be more astute and when I come to SAFE, more articulate. And I thought that it would be a great uh, investment of time for the board members to kind of like take a look at this uh, and give some feedback at our next board, and that's why it's attached to the report up, because I would like to have some robust conversation around it. Also, as you're reading it, and as you are having experiences with SAFE, that you can kind of like give an evaluation and comparison so that we all collectively can better understand the processes for result-based accountability and how the accountability is looking for the RFPs that we're about to bring forth our new RFP. And I think moving forward, a uh, request is whether or not uh, board members can have accessibility or, or have a input in the development of those RFPs or be a part of that process. So I would like to ask that everyone having an opportunity by next board meeting to have to read this uh, peer reviewed information that is attached. Moving on, a report from, from the Outreach and Community Engagement Subcommittee, Attachment 6, page 80. Yeah, I'd just like to highlight that a couple of things that we're focused on is the development of our AP 109, uh, many, sum, many summit participants, uh, as well as the agenda, and also uh, beginning the CAB members, CAB members ambassador meeting assignments in a timely manner so that we have time to properly prepare. Uh, so go ahead. Do we have a report for programming services? No, we didn't meet last month. Okay. Moving on to report from policy and budget subcommittee attached to seven, page 81 through 82. 
Um, if you guys have a quick update, so at our meeting, uh, we pretty much, at our, our meeting was great. We finalized the April 9 access funds from the recommendation that was talked about the full cap. So um, we discussed money allocations for the April 9 access fund recommendations. And then we discussed our presentation for CCP meeting May, um, May 13th. And that's what she said, the presentation just went out. So if you'd like to see um, the updates, we did make the updates that everyone recommended um, in reference to certain sections and funds, things like that. Um, so you can kind of see the finalization of everything, the nice PowerPoint, the allocations, everything. Um, our next steps is um, it was to create a narrative and a presentation, which I just stated was done. So you'll be able to see that in the agenda. We took a break. We are not having a meeting this month, so we get to breathe. And our next uh, policy and budget meeting will be in June. from the Council on Homelessness, if that's in eight, ages eight, three, eight, four. Um, I'll try to make it quick. So um, at the meeting, they gave community updates. Um, November is going to be Homeless Awareness Month. Um, they were talking about how they're going to be creating a toolkit and a video, and they're going to be doing a memorial event. Um, they also gave some funding committee updates. Um, they discussed the renewal, um, renewal housing project scoring tool. And then also um, they gave an announcement about the continuum of care, notice of funding opportunities, no one workshop that they're gonna be hosting on um, May 30th. Um, there's the link there if anyone wants to register to attend. Um, they had a really great group discussion on how to um, engage council members um, to, to share their expertise and perspective um, and knowledge based on lived experience. I don't know if you wanna yeah, okay. I'll still wait till you got there. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then uh, they also discussed this, uh, the Council on Homelessness work plan, and then they shared ideas in regards to topics for upcoming meetings, um, the learning corner portion. Then I'll pass it to Nicole since she's on that board. And I just want to piggyback off her and thank you um, and, and point out that COC no full workshop again. I'm always encouraging people to expand because, again, I always feel like silo for the post entry. So really get out there and learn what's happening and learn. I'm learning a lot. It's a whole new world for me. Um, and it's been amazing to learn about the funding and how to just really figure out how things work. It's like a whole new world. So I definitely encourage you to join these meetings and just ex you know, expand our, I'm going to say expand our mind and figure out how we can actually help our population because they do qualify for a lot of these things if we understand what their other barriers are. So I definitely encourage you to click on the link here and register. It is mind blowing on how these things work. Um, I'm really excited about the group discussion that she brought up. Um, it was brought up at the meeting where the uh, Council of Homeless makes up a lot of different individuals. So learning in that space, how to bring information there and bring information back. So along with uh, Raina, I will be also sharing information that's brought to at the Council of Homeless. Um, and then another good thing is different things that we talk about here, and Jamie Judette is here, is seeing like different presenters you know, when they, what they benefit for coming to the Council of Homeless and presenting. And saying, as a lot of you all, you are um, a lot of CBOs as well, and that come with a lot of different backgrounds and deference to mental health. So coming there and being at points, it's time for us all to connect, not just within reentry, within the community. So I would bring more information back for her and also uh, bring information back to them that is talked about here. Um, it was also an individual that came, I brought that as well. There is a community needs. Assessment being done within Contra Costa County um, for the city of Antioch, Contra Pittsburgh, and Walnut Creek um, around visitor framework for equity and investment around affordable housing. And so they're looking for surveys to be done. So I can put it on the table for the two articles on there as well. So I want to bring back as much information to you all that I can. If there's any questions that, and we may not know the answer, that you may want me or her to bring to the meeting, just ask. I don't have the answers. And then Jamie Jeanette's here now. So can definitely ask her as well here, but I wanted to up that. Um, as she brought up the, the feedback, so click on and join the <laughs> That's it, I'm done. Thank you. Now, our our next step. Ariana, can you help us with this process? Yeah, for next steps, I have review results-based accountability report to, dis get, to discuss at next CAB meeting. Um, continue discussing expanding the reentry voice newsletter, create outreach script for cold calling and presentations, create outline with deadlines for recruitment outreach, um, discuss and finalize outreach assignments for recruitment that's going to be handled in OCEC, then OCEC can bring it back to the full body 
for further discussion, and then for future work, collaborative events with CBOs like Beat the Streets. Did I miss anything? I think you covered it all. All right. Thank you so much. In closing this session, let's remember that our work is not confined to the walls of this meeting room. It's in the action we take, the partnerships we forge, and the lives we touch. As we depart, let's continue to advocate, innovate, and uplift the reentry population, ensuring that they have the resources and support needed to thrive. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone.